Oh, you're attending for the first time? For the second time, I think. Okay. Yeah. So, I'll be taking up one topic of uh, constitution. Okay, that is the union part five. All right. And it's about the president that we'll be taking up, chapter one, the executive, right? Starting from articles 52 to 73, okay? Basically, I'll be telling you in, uh, you know, kind of uh, the general, the important things, okay? Article-wise, obviously, you can uh, read it yourself also. But the general okay. things like the powers, like the what happens in the case of, uh, you know, like death penalty, because we always know that the pardoning power is with the president, right? All the powers we'll be discussing today. Just give me okay. a moment. Okay, so in this, basically, let's first see what are the qualifications to hold this office of president. Okay, so 58 article, jo hai, this tells you about this. 58 article uh, is about the qualifications. Okay, so it is simple. Hai iska. He must be a citizen of India, right? And the age factor is there. He must have completed the age of 35 years, right? And he must be qualified to be a member of the Lok Sabha. Just uh, mute yourself. If you want to speak, then you can speak up. Okay. And another important point is he must not hold any profit of office. Any, sorry, any office of profit, okay, under the government of India, basically any governmental authority, government of India, government of any state, any other local authority, okay, so there should not be any other office that he is holding while he is, you know, be uh, standing for this post of election or this president, okay, and basically, however, the persons, the, there are certain persons, okay, who are not deemed to be holding any officer. Uh, uh, office of profit and therefore such people which i'll be telling you in a bit they cannot be disqualified for election as a president now who are they a sitting president right or vice president of india right then there is governor of any state okay and then there is minister of the union or of any state okay so they are not deemed to be holding any office of profit so then automatically they are, you know, being, they are just made this eligible for this post of president, right? So these are few qualifications, which you must know. And then I hope like you must be knowing about the, who was the first president of India. Okay. Uh, basically you should know till first, uh, at least the two of them, like first was Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Okay. Then Dr. S. Radha Krishnan. Okay. And which is the latest one and who was you know uh, preceding this president which is presently like we have uh okay so uh, who was a preceding one so you should be aware of at least these factors and uh, very important if you are preparing for uh you know judiciary then the states which do ask about the legal knowledge about the general knowledge pertaining to the legal parlance then this is a very important question for that also Right. Article starting from Article 52, as I said, it starts from here and it goes till here. So 52 is very simple, which simply says that there shall be a president of India. So this article tells you that, yes, there is this post called as president 
in our government of India. Okay. And another article is there which says that the executive powers of the union, this shall be vested in the president. Right. And what are the executive powers of president? What they mean by this article, that is article number 53, is that he can make rules specifying the manner in which the orders are made, in which any kind of instruments are made, okay? And also the manner in which they are executed in his name. Okay, how they shall be authenticated. So he can make rules pertaining to this particular feature. Okay, and he can also make rules. Uh, uh, you can just note it down side, but just the, you know, just make your small short notes because there's, uh, it's a lot. Uh, today we'll be like, this is this something, this topic is something which is more of theoretical. So uh, you know, there's no point of that I write it side by side. So you can just make your notes. Like you can just simply uh, make your short notes, manner in which what whatever I've said, okay, about the orders, about the rules. Just put hyphens and write it in your own words, right? And another, uh, in what aspect he can make rules is about the transaction of any business, Okay. Business of the union government. He can also make rules regarding the allocation among the business, uh, really, uh, allocation of the business among the ministers. Okay. And basically, just say, hum bolte hai, like what all business will be allocated to what all ministers. So the rules pertaining to that can be made by the president. So this is one of the executive power of the president. Okay. Also, he appoints the prime minister. Right. And other ministers on the advice of prime minister. So this is also one of the executive power only of the president. Right. And the other ministers, which he appoints on the advice of the prime minister, the other ministers, they hold this office during the pleasure of the president. Right. And another point is he also appoints the attorney general. This is important. He also appoints the attorney general of India. He determines the remuneration of attorney general. Okay. Attorney general also holds the office during the pleasure of the president. Okay. And basically, you have a list of who appoint karte hai president. So first one was PM. Another is your attorney general. Then comes your CAG. He appoints the controller and auditor general of India. Okay. And the chief election commissioner, CEC. Other election commissioners, you can simply write other ECs. Okay. The chairman, the members of UPSC. You must be aware of the UPSC, the Union Public Service Commission. Okay. The chairman of this, the other members of this, and the governors of the states. Right. <coughs> then you have another commission, which is the Finance Commission. So the chairman and the members of the Finance Commission, and so on. Okay. So all this comes under the executive powers of the president only which is very much clearly given that he shall be the the executive powers of the union shall be vested in the president so which is given in your article number 53 simply line hai, but what all are the powers this we should know okay and a core article aa jayega, then that is 78 which says that he can seek any information whenever he wants regarding the administration of the affairs of the union, okay, the proposals which are which might be given by the prime minister, so he can seek any information relating to all this, and this is given in your article number seventy eight. Right. 
also he can require the prime minister to submit for uh, consideration of the council of ministers any matter okay on which the decision has been taken by the minister but jo abhi tak council ne consider nahi kiya hai so he can require him to submit it okay just for this consideration and if we come to the investigation part then he can appoint a commission also to investigate okay फॉर एग्जाम्पल जो एस सी एस टी इसकी कोई कंडीशन हो सकती है ओबीसी की हो सकती है सो ही कैन अपॉइंट अ कमीशन टू इन्वेस्टिगेट इन टू द मैटर्स ऑफ दीज कैटेगरीज ऑफ पीपल राइट एंड इंटर स्टेट काउंसिल जो होता है विच इज टू प्रमोट द सेंटर स्टेट रिलेशन इंटर स्टेट कॉपरेशन ओके ही कैन ऑल्सो अपॉइंट दी कैन ऑल्सो अपॉइंट दिस इंटर स्टेट काउंसिल सो ये भी आपका एक पॉइंट आ जाएगा दैट ही कैन अपॉइंट दिस इंटर स्टेट council okay to promote that cooperation between the units for example the center state and among the states interstate right then he directly administers the uts ab uts mein kaun hota hai this you must know lieutenant governor right so he directly administers the uts through their lieutenant governors या फिर जो कमिश्नरेट होती है ओके थ्रू द कमिश्नर्स और द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर सो ऑल दिस दे कम अंडर द एग्जीक्यूटिव पावर ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट एज पर आर्टिकल नंबर 53 सो कहा कितने लोगों को वो अपॉइंट कर सकते हैं ओके एंड क्या क्या वो पावर है उनके पास व्हाट ऑल मैटर दे कैन आस्क टू बी जस्ट यू नो to come in front of them or in front of the council of ministers okay also in regard to the uts the the president has the power so this is a very wide scope of power that and generally you know agar directly hi bola gaya hai that the executive powers of the union lies in this person so basically he has control over so many factors so many units right so ye to ho gaya aapka executive powers then comes your legislative powers obviously president is an integral part of the parliament of india okay because as i said in the starting also ki ye jo hum uh, death penalty jo jin jin cases mein you know hua hai supreme court ne there are certain cases jab ye baat hui that when the president can be included because now it's very clear that the pardoning power is with the president but wo kaun sa case tha jisme you know the court held that it was open to the president to exercise the power which is vested in him by article number 72 okay so that he can scrutinize the evidence he can uh, whatever evidence was brought on record so he can scrutinize he can go through that he can decide on the sentence right so ye aapka legislative power mein hi aa jayega so president is the integral part of the parliament of india and very important whenever the question like whenever the question is with like who all are the uh, you know what forms the parliament of india what are the units what are the major categories of parliament of india so in that you would always say it is the lok sabha it is the rajya sabha and thirdly it is president okay so these three they make up the parliament of india so president is very much an integral part of the parliament of india as given in article number 79 i'm also giving you the references kon kon se articles mein ye sab mentioned hai okay so in this capacity basically he exercises a number of legislative powers for example he can summon summon is to call right he can summon both the houses of the parliament he can dissolve the lok sabha right he can summon a joint sitting of both the houses right and which is uh, generally you know presided over by the speaker of the lok sabha so he can do that right he can address both the houses of parliament okay at the commencement of the session and also after each general election and the first session of every year 
okay so he can address both the houses at that particular time then another point in this only he can send messages to both the houses okay with respect to any kind of bill which is pending right in the parliament or otherwise also so he can send messages to both the houses right then he can appoint any member of the Lok Sabha to preside over its proceeding, right? And when the offices of both, let's say the speaker, the deputy speaker, they fall vacant uh, at the same time simultaneously. So he can appoint any member of the Lok Sabha to proceed over the proceedings, right? He can also appoint any member of the Rajya Sabha to preside over its proceedings, in that situation, whenever the chairman or the deputy chairman, they fall vacant together, that is simultaneously. So he can, he has this power that he can appoint the person who will now take over the charge on the proceedings, right? And in the Rajya Sabha, where there are 12 people who are nominated, who are basically, you have this, uh, you know, 250 members, 238 plus that 12, isn't it? So, just 12 hote hai, this is nominated. These people are nominated by the president only. Okay. And you can say 12 persons hote hai, basically who are expertise, who are having expertise or any kind of special knowledge or practical experience. Jab unka literature ho sakta hai, science ho sakta hai, you know, art, social services, anything. So, these people, they are uh, appointed. And also among these, he can nominate two members to the Lok Sabha from the Anglo-Indian community. Right. So, waha par bhi, like two people are nominated by president only from the Anglo-Indian community. Right. Then he also decides on the qualification of the members of the parliament. Obviously, he'll be consulting it with the election commission, but he has this power that he can decide on the, uh, you know, the questions regarding to the qualifications of those members okay very important when it comes to bills so his prior recommendation his permission is very much needed this is an integral part again to introduce certain types of bills in the parliament okay for example any bill which is involving expenditure from the fund of india consolidated fund of india okay any bill for the alteration of the boundaries, which is very much given in your article number three, that the states, the boundaries of the states, they can be, you know, added, they can be decreased, okay, they can be introduced. So, the such kind of bill and that bill, you know, uh, you know, mind it, that bill is called as a constitution amendment bill. So, that bill is for the alteration for uh, of the boundaries of the states or creation of a new state, okay. So, in that also, the president plays a very important role. Okay. Now, once a bill has been sent to the president, now what he can do? He can either give his assent to the bill. Okay. He can simply nod over that, yes, it's okay. So, you can just proceed over. Or he can withhold his assent. Okay. Or he can return the bill. If it is not a money bill or, you know, constitution amendment bill, then he can return it for the reconsideration part he would simply you know just return it for the reconsideration by the houses by the parliament right and basically the teen powers and this these are very very important when it comes to the bills okay money bill jo hota hai, that can be introduced in the parliament only with his prior recommendation okay he causes basically he causes to be laid before the parliament the annual financial statement okay that is union budget so aapka article 112 mein given hai okay so that is why money bill jo hota hai uski hamesha hi pehle prior recommendation se president ke hi it will be introduced right and president has this uh, option of veto also with respect to the bills which are passed in the parliament okay the veto that is enjoyed by the president is you know combination of as we know we have absolute we have pocket vetoes we have suspensive vetoes so it's like combination hota hai, right so this was about the legislative power so just to my starting statement he bully that he is the integral part of parliament 
सो उसी से ही नाउ यू वुड नो कि वो पार्लियामेंट को रिलेटेड में ही हैज अ लॉट ऑफ पावर अबाउट दी मेंबर्स अबाउट दी नॉमिनेशन ओके अबाउट दी मैसेजेस दैट ही कैन स्कोवर by about the persons who can preside over the proceedings so that is why just because he is integral part so that is why he has all this powers pertaining to the parliament right so ek ho gaya aapka legislative power ek ho gaya aapka executive powers now comes your financial power so financial power mein bhi maine aapko initially very important point jo bataya that is about the money bill okay and he can make advances also out of that fund of india okay to meet any kind of uh, what unforeseen uh, koi agar accidents exigency aa jati hai koi expenditure aisa hota hai which is unforeseen so he can make advance adva, advances out of that contingency fund of india tabhi uska naam hi yahi hota hai contingency fund fund of india in case of any kind of condition that may arise okay he also constitutes the finance commission this is important finance commission every 5 years to recommend the distribution of the taxes between the center and state this is your article number 280 so kuch articles aise hain which are linked over here so you just mark it in in your bare act also aap usi mein hi ek tarah se tick mark kar lijiye so that you would know ki wo jo powers hain wo kahan kahan given hain right then again there are number of powers that one of them is military power diplomatic powers okay he has judicial powers also so diplomatic uh, powers ki agar hum baat kare then the international treaties international agreements jo hote hain they are negotiated they are concluded on the behalf of president only okay and then they are subject to the approval of the president okay he sends the diplomats he receives the diplomats like ambassadors jo hote hain high commissioners and so on okay so he sends and receives them okay military power ka this you must be very much aware of this that he is the supreme commander of the armed forces he is the supreme commander of the defense forces of india right uh, just never be confused in this because there might be four options in this so who is the supreme commander of the armed forces of the defense forces that is the president no doubt he appoints the chiefs in the army the navy the air force okay he can also declare war or he can conclude peace okay again subject to the approval of the parliament he can declare war and he can or he can conclude peace okay if already some kind of tension is going on right so this was about the military power you have diplomatic powers also financial powers executive and legislative so till now we have five important powers of the president okay very important that is about the judicial powers okay so agar appointment ki hum yahan pe bhi baat kare so he appoints the chief justice of the supreme court he appoints the judges of the supreme court okay he can also seek advice from the supreme court on any question of law or fact because being the apex court okay there is no court above the supreme court the honorable supreme court of india so he can seek advice from the supreme court as well given in article number 143 okay but whatever the advice is uh, you know rendered by the supreme court it is not binding upon the president right it is not something that he has to just Uh, abide by because simply because he is asking for the advice so that advice can only just for his you know kind of assistance but he is not bound by that now the major point that he can grant pardon reprieve respite remission of the punishment okay he can suspend he can commute the sentence of the person who is convicted of any offense okay so अब वो कौन कौन से हो सकते हैं इन ऑल द केसेस वेयर द पनिशमेंट और द सेंटेंस इज बाय अ कोर्ट मार्शल राइट वहां पर प्रेसिडेंट को ये सब पावर्स हैं जहां पर पनिशमेंट या सेंटेंस इज रिलेटेड टू एनी ऑफेंस व्हिच इज यू नो अगेंस्ट एनी लॉ रिलेटिंग टू द एग्जीक्यूटिव पावर ऑफ द यूनियन राइट या फिर वेयर द सेंटेंस इज अ सेंटेंस ऑफ डेथ राइट 
अभी जो डेथ सेंटेंस है उसमें यू हैव सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑन डेथ पेनल्टी विच आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट सो फर्स्ट केस इज बच्चन सिंह केस दिस यू मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ इट जहां पे रेयरेस्ट ऑफ रेयर केस की बात की गई थी इन दिस केस दूशन बेंच कंक्लूडेड दैट द अवार्ड ऑफ डेथ पेनल्टी डिड नॉट वॉयलेट आर्टिकल नंबर फोर्टीन एंड ट्वेंटी वन बट उन्होंने ये रूल करा दैट डेथ पेनल्टी वहीं पर अवार्ड होगी वेयर इट इज रेयरेस्ट ऑफ रेयर केस राइट देन कम्स योर कहर सिंह केस 1989 का where it was held that it is open to the president to exercise the power which is vested in him by article number 72 to scrutinize the evidence which has been brought before the court this is just as i said earlier okay and then he can decide on the basis of those evidence he can decide on the sentence also okay and in doing so a president ko it doesn't mean that the president you know he does not amend he or he does not modify or supersede uh the judicial record okay president acts in a wholly different plane from what the court acts so hum isko kabhi bhi confuse nahi kar sakte that he is just you know he is a uh, kind of superseding the judgment of the courts he is acting in a altogether different plane because of the powers that are vested in him okay so this was held in kehar singh case only okay court ne ye bhi bola that the president is entitled to go into the merits of the case ओके डिस्पाइट ऑफ द फैक्ट कि जुडिशली जो कंक्लूजन आ चुका है बाय द सुप्रीम कोर्ट सो द प्रेसिडेंट हैज दिस पावर टू इवन गो इन द मेरिट्स ऑफ द केस बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली ही हैज टू डिसाइड वेदर डेथ शुड बी ग्रांटेड और नॉट डेथ शुड बी द सेंटेंस और नॉट राइट सो दैट इज अ वेरी हैवी यू नो काइंड ऑफ ड्यूटी हैवी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी गिवन ऑन द शोल्डर्स and the court held in this case only that the president has the discretion even to hear the convict orally So, ये कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स है आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू अ फ्यू जो कि कहर सिंह केस में इन रिगार्ड टू द प्रेसिडेंट पावर ओके इट इज दिस वाज हेल्ड राइट देन लास्टली कम्स द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पोजिशन ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट ओके सो प्रेसिडेंट हैज बीन मेड ओनली अ नॉमिनल एग्जीक्यूटिव ओके रियल एग्जीक्यूटिव है आपके काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स विच इज हेडेड बाय द प्राइम मिनिस्टर राइट then article 74 bhi aapka isi mein aa jayega where the the president has been given the power to with it uh, with to exercise his powers with the aid and advice of the council of ministers and that council of ministers ultimately is headed by the prime minister right 42nd constitutional amendment jo tha 1976 ka this made the president bound by the advice of the council of ministers So that is important point for you, right? Or the forty fourth amendment, tha nineteen seventy eight ka. This has authorized the president to require the council of ministers to reconsider such advice. Generally, वो इसको reconsider कर सकते हैं. Okay. Then it was said that. he shall act in accordance with the advice which is rendered after such kind of consideration by the council of ministers right so this was in regard to the amendments or the constitutional position of the president generally if we see to it so you know president has no constitutional discretion he has some situational discretion you can say lekin kuch aisi situations hai ab wo kon kon si situations ho sakti hain where he has no constitutional discretion he uh, he has other like situational discretion for example appointment of prime minister okay when no party has a clear cut majority in the uh, you know jab clear cut uh, majority nahi hoti in regard to appointment of prime minister then the president can play a very important role okay dismissal of the council of ministers again jahan pe majority prove nahi hogi lok sabha mein tab president ka role aa sakta hai okay dissolution of the lok sabha agar 
काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स जो है अपनी मेजोरिटी लूज कर जाते हैं राइट एंड सो बेसिकली लाइक दीज आर दू थ्री सिचुएशन वेर ही हैज अ डिस्क्रिप्शन टू एक्सरसाइज द पावर राइट प्रेजिडेंट ही है जिसको फर्स्ट सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया डेजिग्नेट किया गया है ओके ही डज नॉट होल्ड एनी मेंबरशिप ऑफ इधर हाउस ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट या फिर कोई स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर इन इट सेल्फ ही दिस इज अ डेजिग्नेटेड पोजिशन ही इज टर्म एज अ फर्स्ट सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया राइट एंड ऑल्सो एक जनरल फीचर है देर इज नो लिमिट की कोई एक पर्सन कितनी बार प्रेजिडेंट बन सकता है देर इज नो लिमिट टू दैट ओके प्रोवाइडेड ही जस्टिफाइज ऑल द क्वालिफिकेशन विच आई टोल्ड यू इन दी अर्लियर ओके सो दिस वॉज अबाउट दी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पोजिशन एंड इलेक्शन की अगर हम बात करें देन यू हैव योर आर्टिकल्स नंबर फिफ्टी फोर फिफ्टी फाइव ओके एंड बेसिकली इसमें आपको इलेक्टोरल कॉलेज की बात की गई है विच कंसिस्ट ऑफ फॉर द इलेक्शन ऑफ प्रेजिडेंट जो इलेक्टोरल कॉलेज होगा इट शाल बी कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ इलेक्टेड मेंबर्स ऑफ बोथ द हाउसेस ऑफ पार्लियामेंट एंड इलेक्टेड मेंबर्स ऑफ द लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली ऑफ द स्टेट्स ओके सो ये जो इलेक्टेड मेंबर्स होंगे <coughs> इन्हीं के ही वोट से द प्रेजिडेंट इज इलेक्टेड राइट देन यू हैव नो सर्टन फॉर्मूलाज जहां पे वैल्यू ऑफ वोट ऑफ एन एम एल ए के बारे में बताया जाता है देन दैट इज वैल्यू ऑफ वोट ऑफ एम पी ओके so that is nothing but population of the state divided by total elected members of the state legislature okay so that is value of vote of the mla and mp ki baat kar rahe hain to value of vote of total mlas of all the states and the uts okay divided by total uh, elected members of the parliament okay so that is just you know for your knowledge extra point then there are certain discretionary powers also that are uh, given to the president generally he always has to act upon the aid and advice of the council of ministers okay lekin kuch yahan par bhi jo situational you can say discretion aa jayegi like in appointing the prime minister which i have told you jab koi majority nahi hogi after elections to the lok sabha okay and also about the council of ministers which i just told you okay and he can also return the advice of the council of ministers once uh, for reconsideration okay he can also return the bill which is passed by the parliament for again you know reconsideration okay uh, then in relation to disqualifying of the members of the parliament when the council's uh, advice is not taken right so ye sab unke jo hai discretionary powers mein aa jayenge पार्डनिंग पावर जो मैंने आपको बताया था दैट इज गिवन इन योर आर्टिकल नंबर सेवेंटी टू ओके देर इज सर्टन टर्म्स पार्डन रिप्रीव रिस्पाइट एंड रिमिशन और एक होता है कॉम्यूटेशन अब इन सब का मीनिंग क्या होता है पार्डनिंग इज सिंपल कंप्लीटली एब्जॉल्विंग दी ऑफेंडर ऑफ हिज पनिशमेंट एंड दी कन्वेक्शन ठीक है कंप्लीट एब्जॉल्विंग हो जाता है पार्डन राइट रिप्रीव इज टू टेम्प्ररी गिव अ सस्पेंशन ऑफ दी सेंटेंस टेम्प्ररी होता है रिप्रीव रिस्पाइट इज लेसर सेंटेंस जितना भी प्रिस्क्राइब हुआ था एंड वो जो लेसर होगा ऑब्वियसली दैट वुड बी ऑन द स्पेशल ग्राउंड कुछ स्पेशल ग्राउंड ही रहे होंगे जिसकी वजह से नाउ द पनिशमेंट हैज बिन रिड्यूस्ड ओके रिमिशन इज रिड्यूसिंग द अमाउंट ऑफ सेंटेंस विदाउट चेंजिंग इट्स कैरेक्टर अगर रिग्रेस है तो रिग्रेस ही रहेगी बट जस्ट द अमाउंट ऑफ सेंटेंस हैज बीन रिड्यूस्ड राइट एंड कॉम्यूटेशन इज वेरी सिंपल सब्सटीट्यूशन करना एक फॉर्म ऑफ पनिशमेंट को किसी लाइटर फॉर्म में ओके ऑब्वियसली अगर वो कन्वर्ट किया जा रहा है सो दैट हैज टू बी इन अ लाइटर कैरेक्टर सो आर्टिकल सेवेंटी टू में जो आपका दिया हुआ है सो बेसिकली जो बाकी की टर्म्स है इससे जुड़ी हुई दैट इज वट दे मीन आई होप इट इज क्लियर एंड वीटो की जो मैंने बात की थी 
there is one thing absolute veto there is qualified veto there is suspensive veto there is pocket veto okay absolute is that is withholding the assent of the uh, bill qualified is which can be uh, overridden by the legislature with a higher majority okay there has there has to be this qualification higher majority suspensive veto is which can be over, overridden by the legislature with an ordinary majority and pocket is delay in giving assent to the bill okay so ye general terms hai aapke. impeachment of the president is given in article number 61 okay and impeachment procedure hai ye jo hai quasi judicial hum isko bolte hain in nature okay because after a resolution is passed by the the house which originates ki impeachment hona chahiye so after the resolution which is uh, passed by the originating house okay by two third of the majority of the strength of the house right so the other house it sets up a committee to investigate the charges okay and the president can defend himself by taking uh, service from the attorney general of india yeah, for koi, any other lawyer of his own choice okay if the second house also passes the resolution with the same majority that is two-third okay jitni bhi unki strength hai uski two-third then the president stands impeached so this is the criteria ki kab wo impeachment possible ho paigi right So I hope it is clear to you. Right, you have another, uh, you know, Article 63, which talks about the Vice President. It simply says that there shall be a Vice President of India and Vice President is the ex-officio chairman of the Council of States. Council of States, we Rajya Sabha, bolte hai, I hope you know. That he is the ex officio chairman. So, Joby vice president hoga automatically he is holding that ex officio chairman position of the Council of States. Okay. He is not a member of the Rajya Sabha and basically he has no right to vote. Okay. But ex officio chairman, jo hai, wo, by the virtue of this position, by article number 63, he is the chairman. Okay. So, being the vice president, he is not entitled for any salary. But he is entitled to the salary and uh, allowances which is given to the chairman of the Council of States. Right? And when he acts as the president or discharges the functions of the president, tab, at the same time, he is not supposed to perform the duty of the chairman of the Council of States. So, ek bari mein, he, he, he is supposed to act in that one single position. Right? Then you have 65, jaha pe duties di gai hai, vice president ki hi, okay? And then it's about the, then there are certain other article 63 till 80, okay? That we can do sometime later, jaha pe election of vice president hai. Just similarly, just say removal ki humne haa baat ki, to removal bhi hai, qualification kya rehte hai, okay? So you have all this. And once we'll do that, we'll also discuss about the, uh, you know, the comparison between the president and the vice president also. So I hope the topic is 